call on all Christian people to come and bear witness against this betrayal of our faith. I am honored to be here today, and I am grateful to all of you for allowing me to be a part of your graduation. I also want to thank you for the honorary degree that I received. I know it has not been without controversy. Congratulations, class of 2009. May God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. All eyes were on South Bend, Indiana today as President Barack Obama crossed over the protest lines to deliver the commencement address at the University of Notre Dame. Now, the Vatican may have been silent throughout this controversy, but thousands of Catholics all across the U.S. have made their opposition crystal clear. Now, they argue that honoring Barack Obama, the most pro-abortion president in American history, that that stands in stark contrast to the teachings of the Catholic Church. Now, many boycotted today's ceremony and instead attended a prayer vigil on campus that included seniors who refused to attend their own graduation. The South Bend area bishop also skipped the graduation for the first time in his 20-plus years as bishop. Now, inside the Joyce Center, the president of Notre Dame tried his best to turn the commencement into an Obama campaign event. We welcome President Obama to Notre Dame, and we honor him. He has been a healer. He has set ambitious goals across a sweeping agenda, extending health care coverage, improving education, especially those for those who most need it. He has declared the goal of a world without nuclear weapons and promoting renewable energy for the sake of our economy, our security, and our climate. Many of the graduating seniors quietly voiced their opposition to Mr. Obama's policies with images on their mortarboards, but some refused to stand silent. During President Obama's remarks, he was interrupted on several occasions by protesters. Now, in his remarks, President Obama urged those in attendance to come together despite what he calls minor disagreements on the issues of life and death, and he even got in a plug for his book. As I considered the controversy surrounding my visit here, I was reminded of an encounter I had during my Senate campaign, one that I described in a book I wrote called The Audacity of Hope. Our own Ainsley Earhart has been on the ground in South Bend all day and joins us tonight with an update. Ainsley. Hey, Sean, let me paint the picture for you. You have thousands of people here on the campus. Many of them wanted to hear Barack Obama. Many of them did not. They wanted to come on the campus and pray for this university. Now, out in the front of the university, there is an intersection. Hundreds of people were out there today, a little more radical off campus than it was here on campus. Many of those people were arrested. I'll get into that in a minute, but I want to tell you what it looked like out there. As you can see, graphic signs. They're holding signs. There were banner wars out there. Many people had sound systems with microphones shouting what they believed in. There were heated discussions, both sides getting in each other's faces. And then there were 39 total arrests today. 40 arrests prior to today, but 39 today. 17 at one entrance of the university and 18 at another entrance. And four inside the commencement ceremony. The way this all worked, if a protester came onto the campus, they were arrested because they did not have a permit. They were charged with trespassing. One of those who was arrested was Norma McCorvey. She is the Jane Roe from Roe versus Wade. In 1998, believe it or not, she became a Catholic. Now she is a pro-lifer. She felt like she wanted to do her part, get her opinion heard. So she came here onto the campus knowing she was going to be arrested and was put her hands behind her back and went off peacefully with the police officers. We also spoke to Alan Keyes. Alan we saw out there in the intersection today. He had just gotten out of jail, being behind bars because he's already been arrested twice over the last few days. This is what he had to say. But the motive for all of this is clearly political payback. There are people on board who have gotten favors from Obama, and they are repaying those favors by prostituting the name and reputation of the university. Now, on campus, a completely different story. The students here are really prayerful, very respectful. We talked to 
Lots of people on the campus. They all had different views, but it was just a different scene here. This morning, there was a morning mass in the center of the campus. And then, as you mentioned at the top of the show, Sean, there was a prayer vigil at the grotto. And lots of people were out there, hundreds of people, in fact. About 50 students chose to be there at the grotto and not go inside the commencement ceremony at the stadium, which is next to us, including this gentleman. This is Jeff, Jeff Tizak. He's a football player here. Jeff, why did you decide to be at the grotto instead of being inside the stadium? Well, at Notre Dame, especially with athletics, they teach you that you're part of something special here. You're taught that something sets this university apart, makes it unique, you know, makes it somewhere you want to be instead of another university, and that's the Catholic identity. And we love this university, and we didn't want to see it betray that identity. And we felt that, you know, since basically this decision, they had betrayed that, we didn't want to be part of the commencement. We'd rather be one that was sanctioned by the bishops and the school. So we went with that. All right. Well, we respect your opinion. Congratulations today. I wish you. you all the best, Jeff. So as you can hear, Sean, lots of different opinions out here. And uh, folks are heading home now. We're wrapping it up. So back to you, Sean. All right. Our own Ainsley Earhart. Joining me now is former presidential uh, candidate Alan Keyes, who has been at the forefront of this debate since Notre Dame announced its plans to honor President Barack Obama. Ambassador Keyes was actually scheduled to join us on Friday night show, but he was arrested on campus during a protest, by the way, his second arrest, and uh, Ambassador Keyes, thanks for being with us. Glad to be with you, Sean. Thank All right, you. All right, so twice, you used the term earlier when uh, speaking with Ainsley about prostituting itself. Explain. Well, I think it was clearly an effort today uh, to try to establish some kind of moral legitimacy for Obama, despite the fact uh, that he takes an extremist stand on child killing uh, that marks him as the focal point of evil with respect to this heinous destruction of innocent life in our world today. Uh, and for the university to honor him in the way that it has basically degrades and debases uh, its claim to be a Catholic institution, sets a scandalous bad example in word and deed for its students, for the Catholic community, for the world. Uh, and by the way, the Vatican has spoken on this. Uh, Archbishop Raymond Leo Burke, uh, who is a very high official, I think the highest appointed American uh, at the Vatican, was at the National Catholic uh, prayer breakfast, and he made an unequivocal statement in which he condemned the invitation uh, and uh, the degree and said that what was happening at Notre Dame was the gravest scandal, meaning to say they were luring people into sin. Ambassador, he got a fairly warm reception today by many, although he was interrupted, as we pointed out many times. Uh, if we look back at the last election, 54% of Catholics, according to exit polls, voted for President Barack Obama. Now, not only does he support abortion, remember while he was in the state senate, you know, with the Infant uh, Born Alive Infant Protection Act, which would literally guarantee medical care for aborted fetuses that lived, he was an outspoken critic of it. Well, that's right. That's why I referred to child killing, because I think that the uh, uh, idea that he is, is for abortion is true. Uh, but it extends further than that and really represents uh, the fact that we're talking about the murder of children. He was, has also said that the one vote in the U.S. Senate he was most ashamed of uh, was the vote to look into Terry Schiavo's situation. So his conscience yeah. is so seared on this issue that he didn't even want to get account of the facts that involved the unalienable right to life. And uh, so I think that's why it is so at odds with Catholic moral principles. What do you make of, of the warm reception by many inside the Joyce Center? What do you make of the 54% of Catholics that voted for Barack Obama in spite of his position on embryonic stem cells and abortion? Well, I think it's the result uh, at Notre Dame. It's just clear evidence that uh, Father Jenkins and the board, the fellows, have basically created an environment in which Catholic education is not taking place. Uh, because the idea that you can establish moral right and wrong by some kind of calculus balance between good and evil is anathema to the teachings of the Catholic Church. Uh, the idea of good is related to God, and they, now Obama turns away from God's fundamental law of love uh, on the respect for life. So he cuts off the very notion of law connected with God's love at its root. That means he's turned away from God, and you can't pretend that he should be honest for being learned in the law. What, what, what does this mean for you and your view of your church? Does this, ch for example, the Catholic Church has been through one scandal that we have discussed a lot, uh, and I've been very critical of their handling of it. What does this mean for you as a Catholic? Does this, does this well, make you question I, with the moral strength? For example, the Vatican, would you have preferred that the Pope speak out on this? We had the local well, bishop. First of all, let's, let's be clear. The Pope is a head of state. 
it's very rare for one head of state to call another evil. Uh, I think what he did was send the highest ranking American to give a clear and unequivocal objective statement about the conditions at Notre Dame, that the fellows and the board had caused grave scandal, which means an injury to good morals that is widely and publicly